folks, Dennis Hancock here, Forage Extension Specialist at the University of Georgia. Got kind of a different um, video here for you today. This one is really primarily geared toward our county extension agents, but also for those of you that kind of follow along at home. Um, this is something that your county agent may be able to provide as a service to you as well. One of the things that uh, we run into all the time here, particularly in the fall of the year, once we deal with that first frost, is uh, some real issues sometimes with prussic acid poisoning. Uh, prussic acid poisoning is actually a cyanide poisoning. Um, it occurs primarily with things like members of the sorghum family, sorghum sudan grass, sudan grass, forage sorghum, uh, Johnson grass, but it can also uh, uh, happen whenever we have uh, like down trees. For example, some uh, trees like the uh, wild cherry tree, the black cherry, the leaves of, of black cherries actually contain the cyanogenic glycosides that actually can uh, generate cyanide. And so we need a quick and dirty test to determine if this is really uh, the case. Cyanide is something that is um, uh, very volatile, so it can dissipate really quickly. So a good colleague of mine, Dr. Ray Smith at the University of Kentucky, developed a technique where they had been using scientismo paper. Now this is a uh, kind of new to, new to the forage world. And this paper is coated with a compound that actually reacts with the cyanide, either in gas or in an aqueous solution as well. And we've developed a little, of, a little bit of a, a protocol here that allows our county agents to obtain a, a grab sample, uh, put it into a, a bag, something like this, a Ziploc bag, and by mashing or macerating this material, uh, in the presence of one of the strips of tape, just about an inch long piece of the scientismo tape, uh, they can determine if there is cyanide present. Uh, the tape actually will begin to turn blue. Now in this case, this one is just beginning to, re uh, to turn, just really light level. Uh, this would really be probably marginal with no risk. This is some Johnson grass that we pulled from just out uh, off the research station here. Very little response here. And of course, if we compare it to something where there's no uh, cyanide, uh, cyanogenic glycosides or cyanide present, in this case, some uh, Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass does not create um, cyanide in any form. So here we can see in this particular case, it didn't respond at all. Just uh, for a check, I, I pulled some uh, of a, a bush that I have at my home uh, called Nandina. Uh, some folks will call it heavenly bamboo. Heavenly bamboo actually has quite a bit of prussic acid in it, and you can see how, how uh, strong the reaction has been here. So essentially the, the steps of the technique here again is to obtain um, some sample, put it into a Ziploc bag, macerate it up, and, and then put it into that Ziploc bag. And in that Ziploc bag we want to have taped into that uh, a little one inch strip of that scientismo paper. And we'll let that air uh, with that um, uh, zipped up so that it contains all of the inside of the bag. We're gonna let that uh, air react with that tape for a little while, uh, about 20 minutes or so, and to see if we uh, get any kind of response. Now, if we get a dark blue response like what we saw with the Nandina, then definitely we've got a major issue on our hands. If it's just a really light blue and it seems like it takes forever to get to that, it's probably uh, very, very low levels. That's a semi-quantitative measure. It's not really going to give us uh, parts per million or parts per billion or something like that. So we have to just uh, see if it, how quickly it responds. If it responds quickly, yeah, we probably have a real issue there and we definitely need to avoid that. Um, and maybe we want to send that off for further testing just to make sure exactly what that level is. But when it comes to cyanide, we, we really want to make sure that we're having very, very low levels or nothing uh, in the diet or else we'll end up some real issues with, um, with our livestock that might be grazing on it. So this handout, uh, this little uh, protocol is being sent around to the county agents. If you as a county agent would like to get some of these test kits, let me know and I'll be happy to put some of those together uh, and we'll get them off in the mail to you, hopefully before uh, you know, we start getting into cold weather here so that you can have these on hand uh, once we uh, do get into that first frost or the first killing frost 
when we start having some of these issues. Now, it's not just frost when we can have this problem. We can also see it in uh, severe droughts as well. So just so you know, that can be an issue, uh, particularly uh, in extreme drought years. So hopefully this will be a test kit that will help you out as county agents to uh, determine in the field if there's an issue and also to help you as farmers uh, that might be listening in to uh, know if you've got an issue there. So with that, we'll uh, leave you here and we'll catch you further on down the road.